to accept today, which only clarifies it more, but this was a titanic battle to rid those falling to it and they knew the source of the problem. From the beginning, Indra thwarted Hermaphrodite and eyes from Hermaphrodites, Thesen of Hermes and Aphrodite, Indra and Badrezaka, or Hagar, who had helped create the aberrations. I think the Vda, which has a great deal to say about it, put it quite bluntly and succinctly. They are female, but people tell me they are male. He who has eyes sees this, but the blind one does not understand. We will see so much more of this as we progress. This particular passage was a comment on six sets of twins, sounds familiar, born from the gods and the offspring, from them who would change their forms. In other words, they were androgynous. We will later see why and how the wearing of long robes and jewelry by men came into fashion, but not by choice, which the ancient Hebrews and others understood so well. In Egyptian art, the goddess Kitbastare, presumably a daughter of Amenare, is presented as a woman with a man's head and with the phallus and claws of a lion. All of the ancient literature is a catalogue of nature gone awry. The Gnostic texts give it as the reason for man's fall and indeed it has been when instincts and responses are confused. We have already seen inferences to this being so at the fall. Whenever the endocrine system is disturbed the recipient is a confused being and in androgyny, beings are attracted to one another to hasten an end through unlimited and uncontrolled passions as an outlet for overstimulated or under grenades from an improperly working pituitary which is pumping too much follicle stimulating hormone. Today, many andric men are being beaten in the job market and male egos are taking their worst blows in history since the fall of Greece and Rome, because as then, Andric women took male jibs and duties away, even serving in the army. This has always been a marker of a civilization's end when men are so weak they allow gynandromorphic women to work side by side with them. As the daughter of a professional soldier I have always heard the men speak in private how they abhor manage women working with them as it is an abomination. But these men are in their 8, 12, 50s and left over from the last days of the Andric men. Today's male soldiers are very jithic and seem to accept them. They have made every woman a fool because of their behavior which opens them for sordid remarks and lowers the dignity of womanhood, of which they know nothing about. Most men believe all women are rough, tough and easy because of the androgyne. The andric men seem to instinctively realize one thing that is known through biomagnetic studies, as these gynandromops have such a confused electromagnetic system, andric men are negative, genix positive, it interferes with their normal negative resonances and they become uncomfortable error and d. Them as it literally is sight to side as the energies around each cannot fuse. The men thus become more prone to error, confusion, etc. One thing you learn quickly in bioelectromagnetic studies is that bodies are constantly reacting to one another. The trite saying that someone has good or bad vibes is instinctively true. It seems abhorrent that men shall have to work with such errors of nature in whatever job. Lesbianism is well known in working women. It is a great error of NASA to place these types with their male astronauts for another problem is that in an emergency, the men's reactive instincts will turn to saving the women when energies could be better spent elsewhere. The space shuttle accident may not have turned out so bad. Had they not had such a cargo load of gynandromops aboard, we will never know for through will we? To get a true genic in space much less in an airplane, you would have to strap her down and knock her out as estrogua is a positive substance and cannot leave the negative earth. We will speak more upon this later. However, no feminine wants to be a soldier, which is why nature invented a wonder for being called man.
These same occurrences weigh in Egypt, summer, Greece and Rome towards their ends and women became the true epitome of the hoyden as she took to the service, business, and politics as one of the effects of androgyny for a woman is constantly struggling with her dual genders. In all these empires, as now, she refused to raise her children, much less nurse them as prolactin gave way to androgens and all motherly love went out with the chambered pot and they sought the male world, uncomfortable in theirs. They cannot stand being feminine as they are more male. If you do not believe in the occurrences of these ancient times it is not pertinent, but if true they certainly add fuel to the fire for these biochemical errors are archaic. Today, you need look no farther than your plate to see one of the reasons for it. The reason refined sugar is poison to a fetus is tie. Carbohydrates are its prime source for energy metabolism. For this reason, any fnid food will cause severe restrictions on growth of the fetus as the mother cannot biochemically register a molecularly altered food. There has been a question whether insulin is present in the fetus but it has been found in many and is now accepted. The biochemical insulin is believed to be a byproduct of an ovotaxed pagicreus and not normal at all as honey does not seem to spawn it. The former quoted Researchers could not understand that studies showed fructose to be high in fetal plasma, amniotic and allantois fluids, but with a low turnover in energy, so they figure sugar is better. This is the beauty of fructose, the body uses it as needed. Instead of one big rush of energy and a following emptiness, there is no insulin. High, which is one reason refined sugar is considered a narcotic, no shock to the Baby is a pre digital food as sugar does. These same researchers declared that since so much adipose tissue is on a newborn they can live on this and do not need nursing. Man, they say, is fortunate that he comes into the world so fat while other animals. 8, 13. Baby is put on fat after birth. T.I. latter is how man should be. We have a great misconception of the so-called healthy baby being fat and chubby. This is fat laid down by all the sugar and fucks the mother consumes and the heavier the baby the worse. It is on the mother and child at birth. Today's women are giving birth to over six pound babies which is too much and tears her apart causing a head injury to the bubby ass. Well as numerous other problems. Even in gestation bubbies have to fight obesity now. Those chubby little cheeks are actually inflamed parotid glands from all the toxins. One study did admit glucose and insulin causes fetal hyperglycemia, but they still don't acknowledge the sugar problem and as usual will scratch their heads and think it is their duty to create some miraculous drug or tripogenetic code to conquer it. Men have been found to almost continually secrete follicle stimulating hormone which is a terrible drain on them for they are prone then to becoming libidinous. While women have the same problem which fluctuates with the menses which tricks her into craving coitus when she shouldn't. All of this can be blamed primarily on a combination of androgyny and sugar, salt and alcohol, primarily sugar, which throws the brain tissues into a tailspin as it malfunctions the pituitary in particular. When anthropologists tell us women are a perpetual gamic machine they are speaking of andric women who have very dire problems, or pathological studies of couples today, is a study of biochemical mix-ups. Where the woman is andric, domineering, it is a guarantee the man is always genic, passive, so common today amongst the working woman, and the husband who condones it. People's mating habits are a study in endocrinology and thanatology. This is easily recognized in the amount of divorces and marital strife in America today. Two out of three marriages from such unions end in divorce. With a bumper crop of unhealthy, unstable offspring. Dr. Melvin E. Page, in his endocrine research, found several cases where male or female hormones must be added to cure a disorder.
Body shapes were used as a prognosis as well as biochemically to determine the levels of hormones such as arm and leg length, trunk, etc. according to andric slash genic proportions. Just as today with working women who are more male dominant, they have developed male disorders that would have remained dormant if they had not placed themselves in a male world of stress which elevates their testosterone, as does exercise, heart disease, ulcers, nervous disorders such as loose bowel syndrome and cancers as well as many other ailments rarely suffered by women are occurring. Men would not have most of the disorders they have if they were married to genic women who have retained the instincts to healthful cooking. It has been found that most dental disorders are caused by hyperandricity. Women are even Experiencing baldness like males where there is often an imbalance of hormones as in the thick neck of males. Often the mixing of the hormones rather than just a disproportionate amount causes many physical problems. We are seeing many married couples breaking up after many years of marriage when menopause uncovers the true andric qualities of the wife or the genic of the husband. Menopause is the final breakdown of the body from Nutritional losses, it's not an evolutionary state or normal by any means, which is why it is so hard on women. If we were natural it would come easy like breathing. The same as with men. It is well known in holistic practice for some menopausal women who return to a biologic diet to ovulate again and there are records of women having babies in their 80s and 90s as well as over 100. We also ate. 14. See tooth regeneration after 100. More andric men are prone to prostate cancer because they require purer diets but refined foods strips away zinc which is most important to the granades and prostate. They have sometimes said the mark of a man with prostate trouble was that his wife was frigid but the fact is the mark is that she is an awful cook and dietitian. Genic women retain the proper food and preparation instincts and are excellent in preventative medicine through food. With fast food chains and supermarkets, one entering America for the first lime could surely tell this is a land of andric women who will run from the kitchen as soon as possible for she is in foreign territory. Man has the duty to get the food she cooks and then feeds him properly so he can do his job of supporting the family. It is a beautiful biological feedback. Cooking is an art in the proper preparation of same means the life and death for all she serves. But now Lai is dying of heart. Attacks at anywhere from 25, 40 and suffering from a score of diseases because he is said by anthropologists to be inferior to women. Man and wife have always been a team to the mutual benefit of both. Androgyny fights this. There would be no need for one or the other if androgyny were right. How woman has failed miserably when she left the heart of the home of which she is the foundation. Her children are licentious, disobedient, drug and alcohol dependent and morally depraved. This is not the fi of society but only the mother's as she is the only one who can instill hygiene and ethics along these lines while the man fills in for others. As the Kabbalah tells us, a man teaches his children wisdom and the wife understanding. Androgyny does mean death. One of the biggest culprits of androgyny as stated is refined sugar. Bless the man who has a wife who has instincts against it for years of many days and has very strong offspring. We need glucose because our brains are highly active as compared to other animals, hence we have a sweet tooth. Our bodies also require 60% glucose to convert to heat and energy. This means our bodies have to receive a food as whole, not stripped of its minerals and vitamins as any refined food is. Thereby, we can digest it. Sugar is the worst culprit for our bodies depend on carbohydrates. As a highly electrical food, our bodies cannot break down anything refined and 
converted to body processes as it does not recognize its broken molecular structure. And the system is thrown out of balance. Like diesel in a gasoline car. We criticize drug use in this country but allow one of the worst drugs there is to be sold. In Ayyubd and Islamic medicine it is considered a drug, a narcotic, kept under lock and key. Its damage to man is beyond all comprehension in all areas of physiology and biochemistry and we will be constantly delving into it through the chapters. As one doctor declared, as near as I can judge, four generons of sugar eaters is about all Thai nature will tolerate and the last two are not much good. Amongst primitive peoples, as they call them, these effects are seen in the second generation. Sugar consumption has been around since the time of Christ though I have wondered if certain references in Egyptian texts do not refer to it and white flour. Barley is mentioned often. Glucose was meant to be digested gradually but sugar is indigestible, it is pre-digested which is why the body cannot go through the chemical steps to process it. States our Dr. Page. I believe sugar to be the most disastrous substance of civilization not only because it is a deficiency food, but because through its use we impose undue hardship upon TL circumflexy sugar converting glands. But its biggest assault is on the brain, the pituitary in particular. 8, 15 which cannot recognize the drug and expels excessive hormone releases. The islands of langerins in the pancreas releases insulin which burns up your blood sugar and everyone suffers from a high and then a hypoglycemic low and the brain is then not capable of perceiving stimuli properly. Aggressive behavior is thus more prevalent. Children become hyperactive, adults ill and neurotic. Many panic attacks are caused from this whenever a certain stimulus triggers it. There is no crime, no illness. That cannot be attributed in part or all to sugar. PMS is common for sugar obs the body of calcium and raises phosphorus bringing pain and anxiety. Birth defects are a great resultant from it. I have to laugh wryly at the march of dimes and their gum and nut machines to get funds. The very thing that contributes to birth defects they are pushing sugar and shell peanuts. The latter's oils turn carcinogenic hours after shelling and they have usually been denuded of the skins which means they cannot be digested. Tumors love refined sugar as it lowers basal metabolism thus. Heat output and oxygen, which disturbs the body's electromagnetic fields. Still we or led to believe from advertisements and radio announcements that we must have artificial sugar for abundant energy. Unfortunately, the voice against the use of artificially made sugar is weak. Even many of the medical profession repeat such statements, since many of them have learned no better. There is some excuse for this ignorance, for the effects of sugar circumflex are difficult to discern. The FDA has just announced that sugar is good for you and despite all the research to the contrary, denies it, but they have the sugar industry backing them up, which tells you 